In this video, we're going to look at how to compute arc length. So suppose I have a curve, a curve in space. Now here's one, here's my microphone cable. All right, I want to measure the length of this. Well, how might you do that? You probably say, well, straighten it out. Then I can just hold it ne up next to a ruler and I can measure the length of it, right? But what if it was a curve that I couldn't straighten? What if it was a rigid curve? How would we measure the length then? Well, what you might try to do is you might try holding up the ruler two pieces of the curve and measuring little chunks of it, adding those little measurements up, and that's an approximation for the length of the curve. And this is what, generally, this is the technique we're going to use. Um, of course, what we're going to do is we're going to use calculus, and that will enable us to get not just an approximation, but a precise way to measure the length of the curve. And what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be describing our curves in terms of vector, fu vector functions. We know that vector functions can describe very intricate, very interesting curves in space. So let's take a look at this. So the measurement of the length of a curve is called arc length. All right. Suppose we have a vector function, and it has given us a curve. It plots with a curve like this. All right. So our vector function is the vector function r, right? And uh, this will be, say, r of a, and it will go up to r of b. So how are we going to measure this? Well, we talked about one way to do this is to break it up into little pieces. I can't use a ruler to measure the length of this whole thing because my ruler is straight and this is not. But if I subdivide this, and the mathematical term for that is to partition it into little pieces, I could hold the ruler against each one of these pieces and get a reasonably accurate approximation. The more I subdivide this smooth curve, the more the little pieces begin to resemble straight line segments. And that's the whole idea of calculus, is exploiting this fact. Let's zoom in to a particular part of this curve. Okay, Let's take a look at that a little bit closer. All right There it is. So here's one partition point, and here's the other partition point. Now this is the value of r at some t. So let's call this r of uh, ti. This point over here is r of t at some other, of, of the next uh, partition point. So I'm going to add to t some small amount. Let's call that delta t. So this is r of ti plus delta t, a change in t. Right, that's my next point. Now I can get this distance, right? This is just a vector going from here to here. How do I write that vector down? Well, that vector is just the difference between these two vectors. Okay, well, that would give me this straight line distance. Well, let's think about one of the things we do an awful lot in calculus, and that is computing derivatives. The derivative of the function r at this point gives me a vector tangent to the curve. We know this. But how do we actually compute it? How is the derivative defined? Well, it's defined in terms of a limit. It's the limit of the ratio of the difference between these two points and the the difference between the t value of these two points. That's how a derivative is defined. This is called a difference quotient. And the limit as the uh, difference in the argument of these functions goes to zero, in this case delta t, is, as that goes to zero, that gives us the derivative. Well, if this is equal to the limit, that means that when delta t is very, very small when it's near zero, these two quantities are approximately the same. Those are approximately equal when, when t is small. When, sorry, when delta t is small. Well, if I just multiply both sides by delta t, I can see that this quantity which is what we wrote down at first, is approximately equal to is approximately equal to r prime of ti times delta t. Now what we need to do is we actually need to measure the length of this quantity. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the length 
Now, the length of this vector is giving us the approximate distance between these two points. And we said that as these points are get closer and closer together, the distance between the points better approximates the distance along the curve. So as delta t approaches zero, and equivalently, as the points get more and more numerous, we get better and better approximations. So what we want to do is we want to add up all these little distances and then take the limit as the distance between these little points goes to zero, or equivalently, as the number of points goes to infinity. So that's what we're going to write down next. So n here represents the number of subdivisions, which is related to delta t. As n gets large, delta t gets small. Now, you should be familiar with things that look like this. If I take the sum where n goes to infinity and this quantity gets really small, this is an integral. right? What we're doing is we're computing an integral. So the limit will end up being What I'm going to do is I'm going to take, this is just a scalar. Delta t is always positive, so I can pull it outside of the uh, magnitude, right? So I'm going to pull it outside. And in the integral, when we write down the integral, uh, the delta t becomes a dt. And this is our formula for arc length. If I want to find the length of a curve between r of a and r of b, as we've specified here, the formula is just this. We just integrate the magnitude of the derivative vectors as t ranges from a to b.